Okay, welcome everybody to another podcast with Complete Sports Media. We're uh, really excited today. We've got a fantastic guest that we're going to be speaking with, Scott Holburn. Uh, he's joined us before and uh, we're going to have another opportunity to speak to him again and uh, get his take on the latest UFC, which was uh, just held this past Saturday in Las Vegas at the um, Apex facility. Uh, yeah, it's been fantastic to see so many cards so fast and furious. And uh, this card definitely lacked, lacked a little bit of star power, but um, it delivered uh, for, with a lot of great fights and a lot of quick early stoppages uh, in the uh, preliminary round. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was fantastic to see them uh, pull it off and, and, but there he is. Hey, Scott's joining us right away. <clears throat> hey, Darren, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Nice to I'm see really you. good, thanks. Nice to see you too. Excellent. Uh, having a good week so far? So far, so good. It's been nice. The weather's turned, uh, has turned nice, so that, that makes it a lot easier <laughs> than being inside with the kids. You know, having three kids, it's uh, get pretty tight quarters in there. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah well, how are you uh, doing? I'm doing I'm doing excellent, really good. Yeah, busy, busy, but um, having a lot of fun. It's been really I great. I see that you you've been posting a lot. You've been uh, doing uh, interview after interview. It must be a kind of a throwback to your old broadcasting days. Yeah, sure, sure has been. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, bringing back a lot of good memories, being able to get in touch with a lot of people that I've worked with over the past. And yeah, it's been fun. This is really exactly what I love to do. I love to talk sports with people and. And uh, I'm hoping that more and more people will be tuning in as time goes on because, uh, you know, the sports is coming back and uh, something to actually really start enjoying, breaking down and talking about sports. Uh, you know, what, what can be better? Let me guess you want to talk some UFC. <laughs> yeah, with, <laughs> yeah, with you, uh, it's always the best thing to do with you. Uh, I think uh, from the very first time I ever met you, uh, we talked UFC starting at you know, minute one, and uh, we haven't stopped for years. So it's, uh, of course, yeah, that's why I love to have you all the time. Let's talk some UFC today. Sounds good. I wanted to actually start with um, something that we talked a little bit about yesterday. Um, I think we sort of, you know, talked about it, you know, quite briefly at the end of what we were talking about. But I, I want to bring it up right, up right at the beginning. And um, it starts, I guess, germinating from a conversation that we had via text uh, earlier in the week, and you had just said how much you love this sport, how much you love MMA, how much you just think it's just fantastic. And, and I said that, you know, I really think that people should realize how important it is for young people, uh, people of all ages, as you said, uh, to be able to get a chance to go to a gym. Uh, learn these skills and have an opportunity to, uh, you know, meet a lot of really close friends and, and people that you can be solid with and that you can learn all these disciplines with. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it, the sport kind of had a, had a bad rap for so many years, just, you know, I, I, and I think it was just people who didn't, who probably hadn't watched the sport or fully understood it. I mean, now with the weight classes and, and the, you know, even with the, with the, the fight kits that they, that they wear, the sports legitimize itself quite a bit, but overall, I think mixed martial arts is a, is an excellent skill to have. It's an excellent form of exercise. It's an excellent form of discipline. Yeah. It's uh, great for self-defense. It's great for self-esteem. I, I can't say en enough about it. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I fully agree. Um, yeah. It just seems like, you know, there's just so many elements to it that are, are fantastic for your life. Um, everybody that, I've known that have got involved in it said, you know, it really changed their life. It really saved a lot of lives that guys that I've, I've talked to and, and girls too. And, and it's just been really, really crucial for, you know, the ability to get that discipline, get that training, get um, physically active and, and uh, the camaraderie, you know, I have friends, you know, I've met, you know, in combat sports, you know, all through my life. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I know that they're really, really solid friends that I can count on anytime I need to and want to. And, and I can tell by the group that you hang around with too, that, you know, that's the way it is. Um, I've been able to have an opportunity to meet a lot of those guys and, um, you know, I feel like they're all really solid people and, you know, great to have friends of yours. Yeah. I mean, for what people don't 
fully realized, I don't think, is that uh, mixed martial arts, especially these guys in the, in the professional circuit, it, it's a team sport. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, guys you'll see come from, there's you know, specific teams. I mean, there's guys at AKA or from TriStar in Montreal, or we were talking about um, Henry Hooft and uh, those guys down, the former Black Zillions down in the... Uh, uh, down in Florida there, which uh, Gilbert Burns and Usman are going to, are both on the same team, are going to be competing at uh, uh, 250, 251. Uh, but you, it's really a team sport. And, uh, you know, I mean, I grew up playing other team sports, but uh, you don't really know, you don't really have a true camaraderie until you've fought to the near death with somebody, you know. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to explain until people actually – have done it i mean and you still you have to be at a higher level i mean when i was a kid and i competed in judo you know you went to the judo club and you saw these guys a couple times a week and you were kids and you went off and did your own thing but really as an adult when you when you hang out with these guys and you train with them and they help you improve upon and i'm not competing or anything i'm just doing it just for for fun and for my own my own peace of mind and and, and when these guys are working with you and training you and helping you become a better better fighter it's 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 a real real team sport for sure yeah no i love that part of it i don't think people do um think of it as a team sport and and start you know acknowledging it that but um you know i see it and you know you mentioned some of the top teams out there there's teams in every city in north america there's some really really great teams that are organizing and you know they're getting better and better and being able to give somebody the, the full spectrum of disciplines. Um, I was mentioning um, to s some people this week about, you know, if a fighter doesn't, um, isn't strong in one discipline, the other fighter tries to expose that. And, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of these camps, they go in and they get training in three or four different disciplines. And so you're so well-rounded and you're so, um, you know, so good and adept at, at handling anything. And like you said, self-defense was a, Another aspect of it that's, you know, very, very crucial, especially for women, um, if they're ever, you know, concerned and worried about being out at night alone or, you know, just in situations where they feel a little bit worried, um, you know, that, that must be so much more of a peace of mind if they've had that skill that they've been able to get from self, you know, self-discipline and being able to, you know, handle themselves. Well, I think a lot of people do, you know, kickboxing and, and, just almost like aerobic kickboxing and stuff like that, but which is all great, great skills. But uh, that's why I really love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because you're actually grappling, you're actually rolling with someone, you're actually having that you know close quarter combat with with someone rather than just hitting a bag or focus mitts or something like that. Which you know, as you're training that, you know whether or not that's going to translate to actually you could say actually strike someone is 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 a bit different. I mean, you, as you know, you've got a boxing background. Right. Um, but uh, jujitsu is, is great because you're constantly you're constantly rolling, you're constantly you know testing submissions and testing yourself, and and uh, it, and you and you learn to feel people the way people move, and you can start to set up yeah. moves like that. So I think jujitsu is a, an excellent self defense, especially for women, because a lot of the submissions can be from the guard, which is a some which is a submissive position that people can find themselves in, and. Uh, yeah, I know all my kids, you know, I've already got my son into it. My, my, my daughter's going to get into it as well. And I, I, it's, I, I can't, can't say enough about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Any, any parents that are listening, uh, you know, any young kids that are tuning in, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, find, find a, a gym, find a place that you feel good about and comfortable about and, uh, you know, make it part of your life. Uh, try to get in the gym as much as you can. And, uh, you know, it will enrich your life. It will make a big difference. And it has for me, it has for Scott, it has for, you know, numerous people that I know. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, really important. Like I said, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, UFC and mixed martial arts and, and other combat sports have got some bad reputation and a bad name, but, uh, you know, there, there's only positives in my opinion. And, you know, I think it, it's really, really crucial for our society to promote it and, you know, be, be happy when, you uh, kids want to join it and you know adults want to join it too it's uh it's, it's only going to be beneficial i think i agree couldn't agree yeah. more yeah okay well good well uh now let's let's shift our attention to last weekend's ufc they had it in vegas again uh, another um card that didn't look really stunning off the start it had um 
uh, you know, not, not the names that everybody's always talking about, but uh, it ended up turning out to be a really fantastic card. A lot of really quick finishes early on, especially. And uh, yeah, um, where would you like to start? I, I, uh, I, I know those four of the first five that finished in the first round. That's kind of a good place to begin. I think they started, I think they finished in the first, in first minute. minute. First minute, I mean, not round. Yeah, minute. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we, you you were texting me that that day, and I, I couldn't start watching the fights live until until late. I only caught the last two or three fights live, and you were like, "You've got to watch this card." You were, you weren't giving me too much, but you're saying, "You know, you get back there and watch it." So I watched the the, the card the next day, and holy smokes, uh, unbelievable! Like yeah. it, th- this was uh, an entertaining card from from beginning to end. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, you're right; not a lot of big names on there, but a lot of uh, young up and comers, a lot of guys filling in last minute and holy smokes, there's some fighters to watch now that yeah. Christ, uh, Christ, Christian Aguilera, the, in the first fight, man, <laughs> that kid looked good. Uh, he came in, they wanted him to fight uh, last week uh, originally that got pushed. So he wanted to have a cut weight again to, to fight uh, Anthony Ivy. And uh, man, he, he, he took control of the situation was calm and poised. And what, what a UFC debut. Holy yeah. smoke. And he got the, and he got the $50,000, uh, fight bonus. Bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Changed his life. Uh, you know, he's going to be able to train full time now. Um, if he wasn't already, um, you know, he was a former hockey enforcer, so it was kind of, <laughs> That's right. kind of, kind of fun the, you know, that there's a hockey uh, element to it and, you know, 59 seconds, uh, in that one minute, I couldn't believe how much he showed uh, that he's ready for the UFC and making his debut. Um, you know, couldn't have went better for him and his, him and his, his camp and his, his whole team and family. So yeah, I was thrilled that Tyson Nam uh, knockout though. Uh, wow. That was next level. That was, uh, that showed he's a, uh, he's a force to be reckoned with soon. Uh, that was, that was one of the ones that just blew my mind right away. Yeah. And, and he, he was finding newcomers, the Ruka Dashev, but I mean, that guy got to remember was competing and I think actually held a title in glory kickboxing. So he was yeah. not new at all to any kind of combat sport for sure. Yeah. But uh, Tyson Nam, I mean, wow, did he ever, he looked calm and, and poised and, and hit the guy with a, with a, with a counter punch that, I mean, put the guy out, I mean, out, out. And <laughs> it, what, you know, again, this is the, the bantamweight division. You and I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. It's a, uh, an awesome division guys are fast but they can turn your lights out with, with punches that was a catch weight fight i think because uh dashev came in last minute at, uh, and i think it was about 140 pounds they fought at but what a great fight what a great win for tyson nam he yeah. needed that he had, i think he'd lost two in a row and needed to make a statement to uh to show everybody that he's still uh relative and uh boy did he ever make a statement yeah, he sure did. Yeah. Yeah. That bantamweight division, as we said, it's just so stacked. It's, you know, you, you said it murderers row. It's uh, unbelievable how, how many great guys are, you know, in the, in that division and, you know, one to 15 and then even, you know, downwards. And um, I think he, he held that uh, title in M1 global, I guess it was uh, not glory, but uh, yeah. So he, you know, that was his fourth mixed martial arts uh, fight, but um, you know, he, he was, he had been a, a fighter for many years and to be able to get a title in in you know m1 global that's huge so you know he wasn't he wasn't just a pushover that's for sure no no for sure competent guy um yeah and then there was uh so there was four four fights out of the first five ended in the first minute um the other one was uh julia vila raging panda she won in 22 seconds and uh wow that was a, a quick quick fight uh, you barely had time to settle in and there it was over uh, it was uh, pretty wild yeah i mean she came out uh, guns blazing and uh took gina to task and uh it i mean you know that's again the, w- the women's bantamweight division but uh, everyone that's what it's great about these smaller cards people are trying to make a statement they want to get noticed they know that this is the only sport going and all eyes are on them so uh, julia vila did did her job and 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 everyone took notice for sure. Yeah. One, one thing that I noticed from a couple of the fighters is they said they felt actually really quite comfortable in this um, new environment, in this small cage in Apex. Uh, some of them have been coming from the Dana White Contender Series, and that's where they do fight that Contender Series every week. And um, they felt like we, they were back home. Uh, it was uh, 
same sort of scenario. Uh, no fans, just uh, their corners and their, their teams. And they, um, they said they didn't get the nerves like they probably would have if they were walking into a full arena and uh, having all the fans cheering for them and maybe all their friends and family there too. I think it, it, it added a bit of a different element for some of these young up-and-comers that are coming in. Yeah, maybe we gave them more of a the feeling of a, an area where you train in. Um, you know, I, a lot of a lot of the reporters in the post fight were praising the smaller cage, thinking that that's that's the reason why some of the fights are more exciting. I, I like the thirty foot cage myself rather than the twenty five, but uh, I think I think it was more about just guys trying to make a statement, yeah. you know, wanting to get noticed, and you know, not not afraid to take risks. Right. True enough. Yeah. Very very true. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's, we, we touched on the prelims quite a bit there. Let's, let's shift to the main event and, uh, the main card. Um, we'll start with the main event, I guess, uh, five round fight between Jessica. I, who was the number one contender in the division and Cynthia Calvillo. Cynthia Calvillo. Yes. Uh, yeah. Calvillo looked good. I mean, uh, this, that's the division she needs to be in. Uh, she was having trouble making the, uh, 115, um, weight division she was coming over coming overweight i think in her last two or three fights yeah. uh 125 is definitely where she needs where to she be to go. yeah 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 you're right yeah yeah she um yeah i mean i i saw you know a lot of uh her issues and i i think um jessica has the same same issues uh you know there was some controversy there she missed weight um but you know they're talking that you know she might have even been weighing heavier than uh, the results that we saw show so um yeah I, I, you know i'm glad that um i'm glad that she was able to come in uh jessica's a bigger you know bigger girl but uh wow you know very impressive and they're already talking that maybe she you know she's the next contender for kivio is next contender for jajacek so uh well i, I mean not for jajacek for uh Sh- 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 Shevchenko, so, yeah, yeah yeah so uh, that I could see. I mean, Shevchenko has kind of cleared out the rest of the, the division. I mean, she's yeah. going to face uh, Joanne Calderwood at uh, 251. Yeah. I, I, I don't see it going Calderwood's way. Right. Um, Shevchenko is just, just too, too big, too fast, too yeah. strong, and uh, just, she'll, just too much for, I think it'll be too much for, for Calderwood. Calderwood. But uh, Kabila, I mean, she looked good. I mean, this is a, a five-round fight she did. Uh, you know, which is hard to do, especially on your on your on your first time in that in that weight division. But I think this is where I think the UFC has to start looking at things. A lot of these fights on that card were guys at catch weights or last minute weight, last minute catch weights. I think they the, people need to start fighting at closer to their natural weight. Yeah. I mean, they have more energy. They don't have the uh, that brutal weight cut. Uh, not as many fights are going to get canceled that way. And I think, you know, seeing a person like Cavillo, she wouldn't, I don't think she would be able to go five rounds if she had to cut to 115. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, actually four fights on the card were affected by weight problems. And, and, uh, you know, there was, uh, people, there was a fight canceled and then there was other fights where they, um, you know, had lost some of their purse to the other fighter. And, and you said, and, and like I say, we keep, we, we've been seeing recently a few catch weights, uh, cause they can't make, make the weight and, um, yeah, it's been a problem, but it's been a problem for the USC for many years, and it's something that I hope they can address and start figuring out how to have these fighters fight more at their natural weight so it's not so brutal on their health and their body, and we don't see so many cancellations. And, and I think it, it can lead to injuries too, a lot of, a lot of troubles. Well, yeah, when you have that, when, you, when you're dehydrated like that, I mean, you know, you're, you're more prone to cramping and, and a, whole, a whole ton of injuries. I think they the answer might be to have a weigh-in on the day of the fight. I mean, that's what they do in jiu-jitsu tournaments and other martial arts tournaments. I mean, in jiu-jitsu tournaments, you weigh in with your gi on so you, the, the, before the fight. So right. I think that's, that's kind of what they need to, to do. Maybe have a bit more of a, a fluctuation. And now you, I know you're allowed one pound over for non-title fights here. But, you know, maybe get someone uh, within two pounds to weigh in on the day. I think, I think you're, you're going to see a lot. I think you're going to see better fights. I really yeah. do. I think you see fighters that are, that are uh, more energized, able to think better. Uh, I, I think it's better for the sport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's, ho- let's hope. I hope those changes come. Uh, I've been wanting them for a long time, and, you know, it, it needs to be done. So let, let's hope. Um, the, other, the other fight that on that card that uh, blew me away was the 
and Andre Touchy-Feely against Charles Air Jordan. And, uh, wow, that was a really great 15 minutes of action. They, they you know, it went everywhere. They, they used every discipline that they knew. And, uh, yeah, I was very entertained by that one. That was a great fight. To me, that was fight of the night. I know they didn't give out a fight of the night uh, uh, honors that night. They gave away uh, four individual $50,000 bonuses. But, but for me, that was the fight of the night. It was back and forth. I, I had Feely winning it. I know it went to split decision. Yeah. And uh, so I think Feely got, got, it went the right way. But uh, it, it, was a, it was a good fight. And it, had, and it showcased everything. It's good stand-up, uh, good, good groundwork, um, good scrambles. I mean, it was from beginning to end action-packed. These guys were, were moving and throwing everything, throwing the kitchen sink at each other. It, it, was, it was a great fight. Yeah. Yeah, I was, um, you know, I, I definitely cheer a little bit for the Canadian fighters. And so I was hoping Jordan would uh, be able to take it. But Feely's an amazing and tough opponent. And uh, wow, that was a, yeah, that was something that I'm going to watch again this week and, and break it down some more. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for both of them. I think uh, they're both really, really, really solid fighters. And, you know, there, there's, I think, only but good things for both of them. And it's great to see more and more Canadians on these cards. Um, obviously, Felicia Spencer had a title shot uh, the week before. And then um, now Jordan had a really good prominent position. And, and uh, yeah, he did really well for himself. So it was, it was, it was great. I, I liked it a lot. So. Um, anything else? Anything else you want to touch on 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 that card? Or uh, well, I also wanted to say how good did Marvin Vittori look? Oh, of I thought course, he, yeah. he looked fantastic. I mean, a lot of yeah. guys uh, forget that uh, he's a guy that went to split decision with Israel Adesanya not that long ago. So right. he's a guy who's got all the tools, and uh, he he's he's a fighter to watch out for. And he had no trouble with Carl Roberts, Robertson, yeah. uh, who's no slouch, and. Uh, I think Vittori is definitely an up and comer and he's a guy who's determined and, and, you know, he's not a guy, not afraid to take risks. He, and came out with a, with a beautiful submission. Yeah, that was, that was really impressive. Yeah. He looked, he looked super solid and, you know, yeah. I mean, to, to uh, have that uh, result against Adesanya, who's, um, you know, looked fantastic in his career. Um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was very impressive. So I'm glad you, yeah, didn't, didn't let me forget putting that in. So, yeah, that was uh, it was a great card. I'm really happy it turned out so well. I, I know that uh, there was always some um, skepticism for people when there's not big names and a lot of people might not tune in. Um, they say that sometimes there's a little oversaturation with the, the fights. But, um, you know, while all these fighters were waiting in the wings and during the pandemic, all of a sudden there's a big line of people that want to keep busy, want to get in there and get some action, make some uh, – make some uh, – get some checks so they can make some payments and uh, live their life. And uh, so now, you know, they're, they're back at it. It, it was great. It was a fantastic card. And uh, now, now we turn to a card that's coming up this Saturday, something to really uh, focus on and uh, start getting excited about is definitely the main event. Um, this card was supposed to take place in Saskatoon on June the 20th. Uh, obviously that couldn't happen. So they've switched it back to Vegas in the uh, apex there. And uh, the main event features Curtis Razor Blades against Alex Volkov. Uh, Blades is 13-2 and two and uh, really been knocking out a lot of opponents, won seven out of his last eight. And Volkov, 31-7, and seven, also seven out of his last eight, and almost had eight out of eight, but got knocked out in about 12 <laughs> seconds to, to go. But uh, tell me about what your thoughts are with, with this matchup. Well, th this is a, uh, to me, this is a fight that uh, Alexander Volkov really needs to step up and and – and make a statement. I think, you know, yes, he was, he was winning that fight against, uh, uh, before he getting Lewis, knocked out Derek by Lewis. the black beast, by yeah. Derek Lewis. But, yeah. um, his last fight, you know, against Greg Hardy, I thought that what I, I expected more, you know, I think right. he's a guy who should be able to come in and, and, uh, put his will on, on a guy like Greg Hardy, who's a newcomer to the sport. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I understand, you know, like Greg Hardy's a big guy and an athletic guy, but Volkov, you know, we didn't see the best of Volkov in that last Greg Hardy fight, so I think he needs to come out and and, and make a statement. Yes. It's going to be tough, though, because uh, Blades is a tough guy. He's a guy who's been rising up that heavyweight ranks for a long time. He's been knocking guys out, but people don't don't underestimate his ground game because he is an NCAA Division One uh, wrestler. I think he was, had a 
University of Illinois, I think it was. But, right. uh, you know, he's got a great wrestling background. He's good on the ground, and he can knock guys out. So uh, Volkov's got to use that reach of his and uh, really try and, you know, weather the storm with Blades, who's, who's been on a tear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great insight there, exactly. Um, yeah, you took a lot of words right out of my mouth. Um, you know, I, I feel the same way in, in many areas. The only thing uh, that I'll, I'll, I'll add on the Volkov thing is I just think he looked really, really extra cautious against Hardy. I just, I know that uh, guys are worried about that big, big punch he, he can deliver. And um, I think he just tried to fight cautiously. And it, it's sometimes smart. Uh, we've seen other guys like Alistair Overeem change his style. He just went in there and used to have a firefight. Now he's fought smart and he's been, you know, getting a lot of really big wins. And, um, you know, that, that's the only thing that I can see different is this Volkov might have been, you know, a little cautious. And I think maybe he'll be the same way against Blades. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, Blades is a guy who can, who, can, who can knock you out. I mean, he knocked out uh, Junior DeSantos. He, uh, um, you know, knocked out Alistair, Over, Alistair Overeem. You know, knocked out uh, Mark, Olenek. Mark. Mark Hunt, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, he's a guy who can turn your lights out for sure. So, uh, like I said, Volkov's going to have to use that reach and uh, watch the level changes because if, uh, if it's not going well standing up, yeah, you know, Blades, Blades can take it to the ground. And, yeah. and that's what he did with uh, Overeem too. He didn't, he didn't want to, he wasn't interested in standing with Overeem, who was a K1 kickboxing champion, as you know. So he got him to the ground and ground and pound him until uh, Overeem was uh, riding the unicorn somewhere else, <laughs> you know, until he, till he was out. So, yeah. you know, I think Volkov, like I said, Volkov has to really step it up and, and, and send a message to the UFC, at, I think, at least. Yeah. Uh, turning to the co-main event, Josh Emmett and Shane Burgos. Um, Emmett's uh, another guy that uh, has knockout power and has uh, – Definitely shown that his last three wins have been KOs. And Burgos has only lost one fight to uh, Calvin Cater, who's a, a really talented fighter on that roster. And, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be probably fight of the night, in my opinion. I think uh, these guys are going to really just stand and bang, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a great uh, a great fight. Josh Emmett, uh, you know, he's got one – he's one of the hardest-hitting uh, featherweights out there. So, um Again, we were talking about sort of a team sport. He comes from a great team, Team Alpha Male, headed up, uh, headed up by Uriah Faber, as you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, he's a guy who can shut your lights out for sure. Uh, Burgos, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's been on a tear. He, he beat your guy, your buddy, uh, Makwan Amerikani. Yeah. I know Mr. you spent Finland. some time with him in Finland. Mr. Finland, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I think uh, – off the top, you know, Emmett, if, if Burgos can, can weather the storm with Emmett and draw it into, a, into the later rounds, I think he, he'll, he'll have the victory. But uh, Emmett can turn your lights out like, like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, can he ever, yeah. Plus, uh, I, I've seen that he won a jiu-jitsu tournament. Um, he, it was at Blue Belt, but, uh, you know, he was able to go in there and won a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament. So he's, I don't think he's any slouch on the ground if it goes there. But, um, yeah. I'm excited. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't, I, I can't see that being a boring fight at all. There's, I don't, I don't think there's any possibility. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, Burgos has got to use his reach. I mean, he's 5'11 and uh, Emmett's about 5'6. So he's got to, you know, use that, that reach advantage and that height advantage to you know, create some space, be less Emmett get in tight. Um, you know, Emmett gets in there and, and, hits in the body and open up your head and then knocks you out. So yeah. um, Burgos has got to, again, use that reach, you know, use the, use the calf, calf kick to, you know, slow, slow Emma down a bit and drag it into the later rounds. I think. True. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to switch, go down the card a little bit. Uh, there's a, two veterans that I think we should touch on. Um, two guys definitely nearing the end of their careers and, uh, um, yeah, somebody that we've seen in a lot of wars uh, to start with is Jim Miller. He's going to be fighting Roosevelt Robinson and uh, I think, uh, or Robert, sorry. And yeah. he's, um, yeah, I think uh, it's kind of great to see a, an old Wiley veteran against a new up and comer. Roberts has only lost one fight and he's, uh, I think he's looking really strong. Uh, what do you think about this fight? This is an awesome fight. I mean, Jim Miller is, is always entertaining. He, he's got the heart of a lion. He never gives up. Uh, but 
Roosevelt Roberts, I mean, that guy, that kid has looked great in his last few fights. He's, he's a young kid on the up and coming. And, uh, you know, he looked, uh, he's only 26 years old. He looked fantastic. Uh, his last fight a few weeks ago against Brock Weaver, who's no slouch. And uh, this is, this is a real test for him. I think yeah. if he can uh, really make a statement against a, like you said, a wily veteran, like uh, uh, Jim Miller, it'll, it'll really make a statement in that uh, 155 uh, lightweight division. Yeah. I mean, I think this is one that again is being fought at catch weight. I don't know if it, Jim Miller's already agreed to can't make the 155 or Robert doesn't want to cut so much weight. Cause he just did a couple of weeks ago. But again, uh, it's it's going to be a great fight. Uh, Roosevelt Roberts, for me, is a kid who's got all the tools. And uh, if he can just put it together, uh, you know, look out. You know, he'll be, a, he'll be a good young up-and-comer. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice that he gets such a quick turnaround. Just a couple of weeks ago, he was in the cage. And, uh, yeah, it's great for him to be able to get right back at it. As a young guy, you'd, you know, you'd like to fight all the time. Uh, you know, they, the UFC tries to give people three fights a year, but – Guys like Donald Cerrone, you know, he can fight five, six, seven times a year, maybe even more. And and uh, guy, guy like Roberts being young, hungry, uh, you know, nice that they're giving him such a big opportunity right away. And and if he can get, you know, Jim Miller out of there, wow, uh, you know, the confidence level will start to soar for him. Yeah, I mean, Jim Miller, uh, you know, he's uh, 36 now. He also is getting, you know, he's not the oldest guy in the roster. He's, he's been doing it a long time. I mean, What's his record? It's uh, 40, 46, 46 mixed martial arts fights. <laughs> yeah. And, and so. thir thir 31 wins. And, and he, I think this is his actually 31st fight in the UFC. The other fights uh, being outside the UFC, but 31 fights in the UFC. There's not that many guys that can uh, say that that are on the roster. Yeah. So again, if, if Roosevelt Roberts can, can dominate and, and really, you know, it's hard to say though. I mean, Jim Miller's got a lot of gas in the tank left, I think. And, uh, he, he's been, yeah, always a, a joy to watch in, in, in every fight. Yeah. He is coming off a, a loss to Scott Holtzman. And, uh, but you know, he is last two, two, two fights before that were, were wins over Clay Guida and Jason Gonzalez. So, you know, right. he's, he, he's got, he, he's, you never, you can't count Jim Miller out ever. No, exactly. Well, you mentioned Clay Guida there. He had a, uh, victory over Clay Guida. Clay Guida's on this card as well. They're fighting at the 155. He's fighting Bobby Green, and uh, Clay Guida is just, you know, the energy guy. Uh, they probably, I think they, I've heard him be referred to as the energy energy bunny. Uh, the carpenter <laughs> goes in there and he just throws down and never stops. Uh, one of the most entertaining fighters always. Yeah, this is a big fight for uh, for Bobby Green. He really, he, I mean, he's he's lost two in a row uh, to Dracar Close and Francisco Trinaldo, and then had a, uh, like a draw with Lando Venata. So he really needs to step it up and, and make a statement and to show he's still relevant. Um, his, his, he's been, I think, what, one win out of the last seven fights, I think. Yeah. So uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's got to do something um, or he's going to find himself on the outside looking in. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, he's... He hasn't been very successful. I think it's about five years since he's tasted victory. So yeah, he must be hungry. But yeah, this could be it. So yeah, might 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 see a really f big firefight between these two guys. Uh, it, it could be very 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 entertaining. And Clay Guida, you know, just just watching him fight anybody is great. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen much of Clay Guida, watch him. <laughs> you know, wherever you can see fights, and uh, you'll you'll see some of the most entertaining fights that UFC has ever put on. He's been I think of. I think the UFC has that uh, Clay Guida Diego Sanchez fight for free <laughs> on on their on their YouTube channel. So anybody wants to watch that fight, they can they can see it because that's one of the best fights of all time. Yeah, epic battle, e epic epic battle. Yeah, um, tell me about some of the other fights on the card that uh, you're thinking about. Uh, I, I know Roxanne Modafferi and Lauren Murphy uh, should be an interesting. Uh, battle there. Uh, Roxanne's uh, one of the legends and uh, veterans of the sport. Uh, not not the greatest record if you just see that, but uh, she's fought you know pretty much everybody that you could name in that division. And uh, yeah, she's um, yeah I think she's improving. Uh, you know, amazingly enough, she's still improving, and I I think it'll be great. Yeah, I mean uh, Montefiore, this will be her forty first mixed martial arts fight, so she's been around a long time. 
again, this weight class 125 is where she needed to be. She was trying to compete for 135, and and the 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 opponents were just too too big and too strong. So I think this 125 division is where where she needs to be. And uh, you know, she's had uh, you know some some, some decent decent uh, bouts uh, as of recent. So you know, she beat. Um, uh, Macy Barber, she beat uh, our champion's uh, sister Antonia Shevchenko. Yeah. So you know she's uh, she needs she needs to again make a statement, and say that she wants to move up in the division, and uh, it should it should be a good fight. Yeah, yeah. Anything else standing out to you? Uh, the Austin Hubbard, um, uh, the Austin Hubbard's fighting a, a newcomer, make, a guy making his USC debut, uh, Max Kopskoff. It's I think uh, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, um, you know, uh, much about Hubbard. Well, don't count anyone who's making, don't count anyone now who's making their USADC debut as you saw last week. Exactly. Um, you know, so a lot of newcomers last week came out and, uh, and had beautiful performances. Um, yeah. you know, one, uh, we did forgot to mention before was, uh, Maria Agapova the last yeah. week, another right. uh, person who made a, uh, one of the most impressive UFC C debuts I've, I've, I've seen in a long time. So if anyone gets a chance to go see that, that fight with her and Hannah Cyphers, if people don't think women's mixed martial arts is, is entertaining, someone's just got to watch that fight and uh, you, you'll see some real talent there. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's hard to say. Um, again, guys are, you know, young fighters, desperate, you know, looking to make a statement. So anything can go. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, it's, this is great. Uh, I think we've broken it down really, really well today. I think it was, uh, yeah, a, a, a card that a lot of people, as I said, just really dis- were dismissing, turned out fantastic. I think this card this weekend even uh, could even be, even shine more. So, yeah, well, you know, watch it. If you haven't watched from last weekend, please uh, look ahead and, uh, you know, watch, watch it this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, always great to have uh, Scott Holborn join us. Uh, we're going to be breaking down fights uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, he, he said we have a one-week break coming up, but uh, there's all the way through July we're going to be breaking down fights. And make sure you keep turning into Complete Sports Media Podcasts. And um, I really wanted to say before you left, Scott, I, I really want to um, you know, have you mention your gym. Uh, Jeff Mazeros and the, the other guys that are there, uh, you know, just talk briefly about them. Uh, seems like a great place to go. Yeah, I'm training out of uh, WVMA and uh, Jeff Mazeros is the resident black belt uh, jiu-jitsu out over there. And uh, they've got some, some uh, great uh, kickboxing instructors with, uh, with uh, Blake and Dean Lorette. So it's, it's a great place. And again, you know, everyone find yourself a MMA gym and, and get out there and try it out. It's, it's, you know, you won't regret it. You know, people are, I think a lot of people are intimidated when they first come in and, and then, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be hooked. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're two shining examples of that and we're hooked to this sport. Hope you are too. Uh, please keep tuning in. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate it. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much, Scott. I'm going to send you on your way and, uh, thanks very yeah, much. We'll touch, we'll touch base through the week for sure. We will, uh, we'll, we'll break these down again next week. I can't wait. Thanks for having me. Okay. Take Cheers. care. You too. Well, that was a, another amazing, amazing podcast episode has come to a close. I'm really, really uh, happy Scott could join me. He's a busy guy with three kids and family. And uh, yeah, during this pandemic, uh, you know, he's been cooped up at home, uh, not being able to train much. So, you know, it's really great that he can give me and, and you, his time. Um, yeah, look at all the insight he gave us. Uh, it was fantastic. Really nice to talk about last weekend's card and, and this week, weekend ahead. Um, yeah, keep tuning in. Uh, subscribe. Make, give us some comments. Uh, give us some likes. And, um, yeah, give me some feedback. Uh, love, to, love to hear what you have to say. Take care of yourself. All the best. Have a great week ahead. Enjoy the fights. We'll talk to you next week. Bye for now. Love you.